I'm Julius Johnson Newberry. My granddad was Fred Newberry. His younger brother was Charlie Newberry, who was a large vegetable farmer here in Hawkinsville, Georgia. In 2010, while living in Afghanistan, where I served with the State Department, my dad passed away and we decided to bury him at Haynesville Baptist Church. At that time, I purchased the home of Dr. Charles Robertson, who was a dentist here in town. And I also was able to purchase this property here, located at 87 Commerce Street, which was the old Reagan hardware store that my grandparents used to actually uh, buy items from. Uh, I was so excited to be able to purchase this building, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. So I formed the Newberry Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. We're very interested in preserving history, uh, building community, and providing education. So toward that end, decided to renovate this space. It's a wonderful space with old hardwood floors and the old uh, wooden ceiling with, with uh, uh, tremendous space upstairs, and we, we, we formed a, a community-based center that we're calling the Sojourner Douglas Leadership Institute. Of course, Sojourner, uh, from Sojourner Truth, who was an enslaved American who eventually became free, and Frederick Douglass, who also was a slave, who later became the ambassador to Haiti. So we call the space the Sojourner Douglas Leadership Institute. We have about 2,000 feet of exhibition space where we like to showcase local history and culture. Uh, right now on exhibit, we have over 1,000 photographs of local residents that I was able to acquire from Chuck Sutherland at the Hawkinsville Dispatch. We also have two spaces down here that we hope to convert into a computer lab as well as a reading room. Uh, right now we're doing a fundraiser to raise money to transport over 1,000 books here in this space. We also have a replica of my grandmother's porch. We call it the Annie Lee's porch here that I'm sitting on. It's uh, 24 by 8 feet and we use it as an instrument to do storytelling and, and, tr and training and teaching. Upstairs we have four rooms uh, we want to use for an office, uh, some classrooms, as well as a beautiful space for an art gallery. In 2010, Miss Lucille Bennett taught me how to play Amazing Grace with all black keys. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. One of the things we do here at the Sojourner Douglas Center is we teach the children how to play the djembe drum. Now this is a djembe drum. It's originally from Mali and it's made out of wood and it's open at the bottom and it's uh, cow skin up top. And I like to tell the children that this was the original telephone. In Africa, if the Africans wanted to inform members of their community, for example, that there was a wedding, you might hear something like If, for example, a baby was being born and that was good news and that needed to be communicated so people could come over, you might hear something like If, for instance, someone may have passed away and you wanted to invite people over to pay their last respects, you might hear something a little more sullen, like... So here we give the students uh, from our local schools an opportunity to come in and inspect the drum and, and actually play it and have fun with it. Uh, it's very, very popular. Here uh, we have 
kente cloth from Ghana. This is the royal kente cloth, which is hand woven, very intricately designed with colors, as you can see, all made of natural dye, red, black, and green, with fascinating uh, geometric uh, symbols. And it's very beautiful. And we have this here, which is a very interesting, almost cosmic uh, pattern that very much stimulates the thinking and the spirit of those that visit the center. Here we have a 5,000 year old story of Judgment Day. This story was found on the walls of one of the pyramids in Egypt located in North Africa. If I could draw your attention to the top left corner, we have a person that has just died. And this person has just entered into the spirit world where he is met by 14 judges who welcome him into the afterlife. After passing through this level, he then is admitted into the next chamber where his heart is placed on the scales of justice against a feather while a scribe records all of his deeds. If his heart is lighter than the feather, he then, as is the case, admitted into the kingdom of God. Below, we have eight figurines representing different countries in Africa, all considered power objects that represent different values. We also have some of our books that our community members are allowed to read. And here we have an actual replica of the ballot paper that was used in the historic elections in South Africa when Nelson Mandela, who was supported by the African National Congress, actually won that historic election. So this piece we acquired from Cameroon in West Africa, a Francophone Africa, and it's a performance piece that was actually used in a performance in Africa, and it's handmade from local materials, handwoven, and it consists of copper and bronze and brass, and you can see the head crown along with the goatee uh, at the bottom of the chin, and it was used, as I mentioned, in performance arts in an actual African ceremony. And we have this here at the center, and the children can come in, and they can admire and reflect and see some of the art from other countries. And then we then encourage them to create their own art here at the center. One of the ways we wanted to engage the community was by presenting them to themselves. And so I went over to the Hawkinsville Dispatch and I met with Chuck Sutherland and he allowed me to review his archives and we purchased a number of photographs that he had taken of local residents and his father had taken and we have them now on display here at the center. We have over 500 local photographs and the residents come in and they see themselves as children, uh, they see their fathers and their uncles and it's a wonderful way to uh, remember themselves through the process of remembering their past. Okay, so here we have five clocks representing five different time zones and the 
kids that come into the center are just amazed to think about the fact that here we are in Georgia and at the same moment, it's a different time in different parts of the world. And so they'll look and try to figure out the time in Russia and China and Brazil and Ghana. And the clocks allow our students to, to imagine what it's like in those countries at the same time that they're here in Georgia because it's science in order to understand the fact that at the same moment it's different times we explain to our students that the earth is rotating and it's orbiting the sun and as a consequence there are different times at the same moment on our planet so we use our clocks as a teaching tool to help our community youth feel a part of the larger world that they are in fact a part of. Here we are in the computer uh, space. We'd like to uh, use this space as a technology-based research center. Uh, we're currently in the process of, of trying to identify computers. We have three computers that are currently online and we're offering basic community services in computer training, introducing community members to the basics of the computer. What is a mouse, the keyboard, a monitor, helping them get online so that they can engage in research, but also in basic application uh, submittals, helping them file for needed services, helping them navigate the World Wide Web. Currently, as I mentioned, we have three computers and we have uh, a fundraiser taking place right now here at the center to raise funds to buy 17 more computers because we think this space could hold 20 computers that we could make available uh, to our community. We currently have 20 computers here at the Learning Center. Four of the computers are fully functional, but we have another 16 monitors and CPUs that are not fully operable at the moment. We're in need of parts and uh, technical assistance to bring these computers online if we are to use them and we're very excited about getting these computers fully functional so we can offer more computer services to our community members to assist them in filling out needed applications and accessing workforce development curriculum to assist them in job training. We all know that reading is fundamental and we really want to encourage our young people in particular to read and discover the world in books. And so here we are in our reading nook that we're hoping to convert into an area for our young people to read, to learn about themselves, to discover lands far beyond Hawkinsville. Toward that effort, we have identified an organization that has agreed to provide over 1,000 books to us. We have boxed those books and they are currently in Maryland and we are in the process of raising $1,600 to transport those books here to Hawkinsville. That's the cost of renting a U-Haul and sending one of our community members to Maryland to actually transport those books here to Hawkinsville and we're really excited about using this reading nook to encourage thinking and stimulating the mind. The fundraiser is actually on our Facebook page which is The Newberry Found, F-O-U-N-D, which immediately takes you to our Facebook page where we have set up a fundraiser for those who are interested in supporting this effort. Others can also send any donation to P.O. Box 1112, 
Hawkinsville, Georgia, 31036. That's P.O. Box 1112, Hawkinsville, Georgia, 31036, to assist us in developing this reading nook for members of our community. So here we are upstairs, and we plan to use this area as our art gallery. And we're going to display local artists, uh, as well as books in this area. Uh, we'll also put some furniture in here uh, and uh, create the ambiance that we want to stimulate uh, creativity and thinking uh, and encouraging uh, our imagination uh, to think beyond uh, the, the local. That's the, that's the idea here. So we're really excited about, about this space and, and using this space in conjunction with the space downstairs. So the idea is we'll have students in our technology room, they'll go over to our reading nook, they can do performing arts on our, our porch, and then they can come on up here and they can reflect on art and culture and all of this working together to to help develop the whole person and speak to the needs and interests of, of individuals um, who represent a diverse array of interests. Okay. Okay. This room was actually a storage room when the Reagan brothers owned Reagan Hardware here in Hawkinsville. When I first came in, I couldn't get in this room. There was so much stuff from the old hardware store, but through volunteer labor from community members, we were able to restore this room to its original beauty. And we have the original hardwood pine floors that are just lovely. And the beautiful French doors and all the wood trim and the high wooden ceiling, uh, which is here. And so uh, we're very pleased with, with the work that the community has been involved in in uh, restoring this room and we're, we hope to use it as, a, as an office and a training space to offer services to the community. Here we are in one of three classrooms upstairs and we plan to use these rooms for instructional purposes for our community members. We're really pleased that we have restored these rooms to their original beauty with the original hardwood floors and the original trim uh, around the windows with traditional furniture. We plan to bring in desks and chairs and blackboards and chalk and teach basic reading, writing, and arithmetic along with good citizenship and a host of other things. So we're really excited about this.